Hello everyone, welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson number six, we'll be adding a health value to the player so we can take damage from the enemies. We'll also add a small feature to bounce off the top of the enemies. In video games, giving the player a health value offers a challenge. You can only make so many mistakes before you need to start over and try again but it encourages thinking about the problem and coming up with the best solution. We'll be adding the health inside the player start. We'll need two variables in order to make it work. So if you haven't already, head to the player start and add a couple more lines. On line number six here, I'm going to add self.health and I'm going to set it equal to three. This is how much health the player is going to start with. You can adjust that as much as you like. If you make it a lower number, your game is going to be more difficult. If you make it a higher number, your game is going to be easier. Next, we need to add a sort of invincibility time. If the player gets hit by an enemy, we want to give them a little bit of time to recover before they can get hit again. This gives the player a break and lets them recover and try again. So on the next line, I'm going to say self dot invincibility timer. Now that's a long word. In programming, we can shorten things to make our lives easier. Since this is just a name for a timer, we can shorten this down to be inv timer. I'm going to set that equal to zero. If you need a reminder about what this shortened word means, we can just add a comment above and explain what this is. This is one good use for comments. Just friendly reminders to us or other people that are reading our code. Inside the player loop, Let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to add a couple lines and make sure I'm right up against the wall. Here, I'm going to count down that invincibility timer. So we say self dot inv timer minus equals one. This is always going to happen in the loop. So as soon as we start the game, the invincibility timer is gonna go below zero, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Next, we want to take a look at the collision with the fly enemy. Right now, the only thing that happens in this collision is that we check if the player is above the enemy, and if so, we destroy the enemy. But what happens if the player is not above the enemy? Well, that's a situation where we want to reduce the player's health. Now we can do this with an, another if statement, but we can do it much easier with what we call an else statement. This if statement checks if the player is above the enemy. We can use an else statement to check for any other condition. If I say else here, all I have to do is end it with a colon. Since this is checking for one specific condition, this is going to check for anything else. So the player so the player could be below the enemy, or to the left of the enemy, or to the right enemy, or anywhere in between. As long as they're not above the enemy, any code we put inside this else statement is going to run. So this is a point where we want to reduce the player's health, but we first want to check if the player isn't already invincible. That's what we'll be using the invincibility timer for. If the invincibility timer is less than zero, we'll say that means the player is no longer invincible. And this makes sense. Since the invincibility timer already starts at zero and goes less than it as soon as we start the game, we can tell that the player is not invincible if the timer is less than zero. So we need to do another if statement here and check if self.invTimer is less than zero. If the player is not invincible, 
This is when we want to reduce their health. So we say self.health minus equals 1. We also want to make the player invincible for a short amount of time. So this is where we'll set the timer. So we say self.invtimer equals 60. This will make the player invincible for 60 frames. So since the loop runs about 60 times per second, this is going to be one second. And if you want to make sure that this code is working, since we can't see the health on the screen, what we can do is do a simple print message. Now you can type anything you like inside these apostrophes. I'm going to just say, ouch, to show that the player is getting hit. And if I hit play, you'll see as soon as this guy reaches my player, I get, ouch, ouch, ouch. Once every second. Now, what happens if the player runs out of health? If it reaches zero, we should destroy them, the same as the fly enemies. So I'm going to go on the lines below here, and I'm going to say if the player's health reaches zero or goes below it, we want to destroy him. So we say if self.health is less than or equal to zero. That's a strange looking symbol there, eh? It looks like an arrow. What I'm saying is if self.health is less than zero or if self.health is equal to zero, in either case, the player has run out of health. Now that might not make sense at first, but in some rare cases, the health might go below zero. Say if the player gets hit by two enemies at the same time. No matter what, if they run out of health, they're done for. We say destroy self. Now if I press play, you should see three ouches in the console, and then my player disappears. Next, let's add a small feature to bounce off the top of the enemies. Luckily, this will be accomplished with two simple lines of code. Just like how we jump off the ground, all we have to do is set the jump timer and then set our on ground to false. So when we land on top of the enemy with this line, we're going to add a self.jump timer and I'll say equals 30. So it's less than a regular jump, but still a significant amount. Next, we want to say self dot on ground equals false. Just to make sure that if we bounce off the enemy, we're keeping track of whether we're in the air or on the ground. I'm going to add one more line of blank space just to separate these two features. And you'll see if you land on top of an enemy now, you go extra high. Next, I want you to practice the health feature. In the fly enemy, I want you to add a health variable and an invincibility timer variable. These should be placed in the start. Give the fly enemy two health and set the invincibility timer equal to zero. Since the collision check between the player and the fly enemy is not in the fly enemy loop, we'll have to do some more code in the player loop. Find the code where we destroy this enemy. Instead of destroying this enemy, add another if statement to check if this enemy's invincibility timer is less than zero. If so, reduce this enemy's health by one and set this enemy's invincibility timer equal to 30. This will give the enemy about half a second of invincibility before they can be damaged again. Finally, in the fly enemy's loop, you'll want to reduce the invincibility timer 
by one every frame. Check if the fly enemy's health is less than or equal to zero. If so, destroy it. Try your hand at figuring it out before moving on to the next lesson. See you there.